Welcome to the Centre for Christian Spirituality and thank you for joining us on this 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We invite you now to listen to the scripture. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, approached him. Master, they said to him, we want you to do us a favour. He said to them, what is it you want me to do for you? They said to him, allow us to sit one at your right hand and the other at your left in your glory. You do not know what you are asking. Jesus said to them, Can you drink the cup that I must drink? Or be baptised with the baptism with which I must be baptised? They replied, We can. Jesus said to them, The cup that I must drink, you shall drink and be with the baptism with which I must be baptised, you shall be baptised. But as for the seats at my right hand or my left hand, these are not mine to grant. They belong to those to whom they have been allocated. When the other ten heard this, they began to feel indignant with James and John. So Jesus called them to him and said to them, You know that among the pagans, their so-called rulers lord it over them, and they grant, and their great men make their authority felt. This is not to happen among you. No, anyone who wants to become great among you must be your servant, and anyone who wants to be first among you must be slave to all. For the Son of Man himself did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The context again of the, of the Gospel is part of that journey to Jerusalem where Jesus is going to suffer. And there are three predictions of the Passion. And I mentioned on a previous occasion you have the prediction of the Passion, then a misunderstanding by the disciples, and then Jesus speaks about discipleship. The Gospel today does not record the prediction of the Passion, uh, but what follows imme comes immediately after it. This prediction, the third one, is the most explicit and you could almost say it, it, it says everything that did happen to Jesus uh, in the Gospel description of the Passion. But notice the misunderstanding uh, of the disciples, that they want to sit on the left hand and the right hand when Jesus comes into glory. And these are obviously positions of power. Uh, positions that would carry great prestige with them so that they have misunderstood what it is and when Jesus goes on to teach we'll see his teaching is the exact, exact opposite of that. One of the commentators suggested that uh, in Matthew, Matthew was a bit embarrassed by uh, them asking this question and he puts it down to the fact that their mother told them that's to it. Do. <laughs> <laughs> But nevertheless it, it, shows, it shows a misunderstanding and so then Jesus begins to give his talk on what it means um, to be his disciple. And he, he says the exact opposite, that really it's not a question of lording it over, sitting on the right hand and the left hand. It's, it's out there serving uh, the people, that we must become the servants of all. And we have that sort of very famous saying that the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. And the whole uh, goal of our life in this life it's really service. It's not union with the Lord, that's in heaven. Uh, we do unite ourselves with the Lord, but in order that we might serve. We go to the mountain to pray, but we live in the valley, and it is there that we serve, and it is there that we imitate the service of Jesus as his disciples. I think this one, for me, is unequivocal, and it makes me feel guilty, mm. because... <laughs> I really, the temptation to be served is uh, always constant. Um, so, but this is unequivocal. So, uh, what I really notice is, is service. It's not to be served, but to serve, and that does take um, that takes true humility. So, that's what I really notice there. I couldn't help thinking that the disciples may well have been saying to James and John. Who in the hell do you think you are? And uh, um, going on from that, somebody that I was reading said, 
They probably thought that way because they were so jealous they didn't think of it first. <laughs> and and then, then to think that the Gospel of Mark, in, in some ways it's like a big mirror that's held before us. And uh, as we look into that mirror, that, you know, that question is being asked of us too and uh, invites us uh, to reflect on, on that whole sense of what our mission is about and also who this God is that we walk with and uh, have allowed into our lives. Mm. The account of Luke records the, the, um, the disciples at the Last Supper are still talking about who is the greatest, the greatest in the kingdom. Yeah. So that they, they have had difficulty it. understanding and despite this very clear mm. teaching of Jesus. Yeah. We invite you now to take a moment and consider what is it about that scripture that strikes you on the first reading? We invite you now to listen to the scripture read a second time. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, approached him. Master, they said, we want you to do us a favour. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? They said to him, Allow us to sit, one at your right hand and the other at your left, in your glory. You do not know what you are asking, Jesus said to them. Can you drink the cup that I must drink, or be baptised with the baptism with which I must be baptised? They replied, We can. And Jesus said to them, The cup that I must drink, you shall drink, and with the baptism with which I must be baptised, you shall be baptised. But as for seats at my right hand or my left, these are not mine to grant. They belong to those to whom they have been allotted. We might now consider a practical application on hearing the scripture read. I can think of a very practical one. I, I can't help thinking there in terms of to serve. I'm going to be kinder to my husband. That, that will be my dedication for the week. A little bit more service there. I, I was thinking, um, the question comes up for me often, do the people I serve work around me or do I work around them mm -hmm. and I think service does mean that you work around them in so far as you can. Mm. I'm thinking of service in terms of the ability to listen, to ensure that everything's not about me but I'm open to the opinions of others and that's what I'll strive to do. We invite you now to consider what's a practical application you have in um, applying this scripture to our daily lives. Um, our best intentions will remain best intentions unless we ask God to be with us as we try to uh, apply the message from the scripture. So we take a moment now to pray for the courage and the wisdom and uh, the strength from God to help us uh, uh, make those applications. Thank you so much for joining us here at the Centre for Christian Spirituality. We hope that you're back next week to hear our Lexio Reflections and we will conclude now with a collette from the Mass of the Day on the 29th Sunday. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and so serve your Majesty in sincerity of heart through Christ our Lord.